Welcome to the Walk Show Podcast. I'm your host, Walker Near. Today's episode, I kind of share some thoughts I have on the Super Bowl and as well as in general, just on how people view sports uh, and, and what it is to be a sports fan. As always, the show is produced by Misha Zarens, who also contributes to the music and artwork. Thanks for listening. Here we go. So this week, I wanted to kind of piggyback off of a topic I, I spoke on last week, which was kind of the, the way that sports leagues, especially the major sports like the NFL, the NBA, are, are designed. The notion seems to be, or this common sentiment seems to be that these leagues are designed around the idea of, of creating the, the, the best place for elite competition to take place. And while that certainly is a part of it, and I don't mean to imply that it, in no way is that a part of it, I think that it's clear that the, the the real thing that they're there to do is generate money, right? It's a business. And that's what all businesses do. So it's not that they're particularly evil or, or nefarious for wanting to, to make money, um, but that's that that's really the goal of it. And so the, the reason I wanted to, to elaborate on this further is, is that the Super Bowl just happened this previous Sunday, a couple of days ago, and it was a really low scoring game, right? The, the score was 13 to three. And the most common sentiment that I hear anyone sharing about it is that it was really boring, that it's the most boring Super Bowl they've ever seen. And they couldn't believe how, how awful it was. People that actually watched the whole game are, are wearing it like a badge of honor, you know, like, oh, I made it through the whole thing because it was, it was just so boring. Well, why was it boring? Well, the reason is largely because there's no scoring. Now that might be because you know players didn't play well, and, and so they didn't they didn't execute as well as they could have, and that's why there's no scoring, right? But from the league's perspective, that's outside of their control. But what the league and the league being the NFL can control is is trying to make sure that scoring is as easy as possible because that's what gets people tuned in, right? So that's why you see more rule changes. That's why you see stuff. That, that is constantly geared towards making the offense easier. Now, does that make for a better football game? I don't know. I, I don't know that it makes a more competitive football game, but what it does is it, it, it helps reduce the likelihood that games end with scores like 13 to three, because everyone complains about scores when they're 13 to three, which is amusing because people also complain about how geared <laughs> towards the offense football now is but again you can't have it both ways you either like games where they grind it out and there's not that much scoring or you like the non-stop touchdowns and you want you know every quarterback to throw 500 yards a game and it's fine to want or like either of those but unfortunately they're somewhat mutually exclusive you're not going to have really low scoring grinded out games in a system or a, in a, a, a scenario in which the rules are designed to make it easy. But if there's no scoring, then no one wants to watch, and so then we have nothing. So I don't think we're ever going to see it go away from the push toward the scoring unless somehow they can find out how to sell more red zone subscriptions and jerseys based on defensive plays. Um, but, you know, football's a, a hard sport to understand. Football's a hard sport to follow it just – in terms of watching the game, there's 22 guys on the field doing a lot of things. And so for the majority of fans, really all they end up watching is the football itself. And so they're not watching the defensive end and the, the brilliant play he made to shut down the run. They're just watching the running back and the tackle, right? Or they're, and, and I, when I say the tackle, I mean the position, I mean the actual act of the tackle, right? Or they're watching the quarterback throw the ball downfield. But if the quarterback throws the ball downfield and it's incomplete, they just see that. They're not really into the, the idea that maybe it was really excellent coverage and there's just no way that the quarterback could have been expected to execute there, right? If that's what happens, they think fans think it's boring. Now the NFL has to try and shift it. It's interesting because it reminds me a lot of 90s basketball. 90s basketball was, and, and previous to that, but you know, the 90s was kind of the last era where basketball was not a pretty sport to watch at the professional level, really. There was a lot of physicality. There was a, a practice called hand checking where you can just put your hand on a guy's hip and just keep it there and kind of direct where he can go. Uh, fouls were a lot harder. Fouls that happened every game in the 90s 
would lead to, you know, probably multiple game suspensions now if they were still happening. I think the only reason that 90s basketball has the nostalgia and the love that it does is really just because of Michael Jordan. Because if Michael Jordan's not there and the New York Knicks are one of the best teams in the 90s, well, then that's 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 not a pretty basketball team to watch. Now you fast forward 20 years, right? Now we have Steph Curry and the, the rules of the NBA have shifted so dramatically to favor offense. So a guy like Steph Curry, who's exceptionally talented and I think would be talented in any era, but if he would have played in the 90s or earlier, he would have never gotten to the lane because stronger people would have just literally physically prevented him from, from moving forward. Um, and the reason I bring this comparison up is there's this nostalgia for, well, you know, people today aren't playing basketball like it was really played. Well, it's the same boat as the NFL, where the NBA, after Michael Jordan left, started to suffer a bit in, in terms of, of popularity. Luckily for them, LeBron James shows up. But even that can only carry it so far. And really, it was it was the rule changes to open up the offense, make it easier to score, make it harder to defend, uh, that really kind of ushered in a new a new era of popularity for the NBA. I don't have numbers in front of me, so I don't know if the NBA is actually more popular than the NFL at this point. I don't believe it is, but it's definitely approaching that. You know, the NBA season, as far as media coverage, used to just be about as long as the NBA season, and now it's it's year round. There's I don't think there's a single month where you don't have NBA headlines all throughout the year. And again, that's not because everyone loves tough, gritty basketball. It's because the scoring is wide open now. And people are excited by that. People are, think it's fun. Um, the other thing about the Super Bowl being boring, so the first reason people cite as to why it was boring is because it was low scoring. But again, I, I say to that that that's, that's what the fans actually want is, is a high-scoring game, not, not a low-scoring game. And so they can say that it's boring, but then that comes with all the other things that, that we've talked about, like the rule changes and the you're going to have the controversial calls and you're going to have stuff where – a guy gets called for for a hit that shouldn't he shouldn't have been called on because they're trying to protect the quarterback because as we saw if the quarterbacks don't play well it's not fun so we have to minimize chances for the quarterbacks to not play well right um so the other reason that people think that it's boring is because Tom Brady won his 6th Super Bowl i just think that's crazy you know uh, uh, if a quarterback has one Super Bowl right then we say, well, is he really, you know, is he really Hall of Fame worthy? I mean, he only won once. He only got there once. And what does that really say about his legacy? Um, you look at, you know, a Dan Marino who never did win a Super Bowl. And Dan Marino's heralded as one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time. So that that's fair. But Dan Marino never won a Super Bowl. And that's something that is always held against him. Um, and yet again, it's an example of where people won it both ways. And it, it just it doesn't make sense. When a guy isn't winning over and over, all we talk about is that he should win. Why can't he? he why can't he win? You know, he, if he only wins one, what's wrong? If he only wins three, right? If he plays for fifteen years and goes to the championship or the, the Super Bowl in football three times, well, why? Why couldn't he get there more often? He's not as good as Joe Montana. Or he's not as good as as whoever it may be. But then when a guy like Tom Brady comes along that's literally never been seen before in the, I don't know, 70 years or whatever there is of football history, maybe 100, I don't know how long it's been around, but whatever. Long time of football history. And and this is the only time we've ever seen a person do this. I mean, he's got more trips to the Super Bowl than most other franchises and and as many victories, more victories than anyone, right? So how is that not impressive? <laughs> and how is it that when a guy can't win, all we want him to do is win more. And then when he wins over and over, now it's, it's no good. Now we don't like, now we don't like it because it's boring and he doesn't deserve to win more. And, you know, we're just, we're sick of seeing that same guy win. Well, fine. But then can we stop, can we stop the conversations about why don't guys win more when they're not doing like Tom Brady? And I know the answer to that is no, but it, it's just, again, I just want to highlight the absurdity of the <laughs> the two mutually exclusive points that people want to try and positions that people want to try and hold. Yet again, you know, I'll tie it back to basketball. LeBron James is in the same boat. Um, right now, there's this conversation constantly going on about who's 
who's better, LeBron or MJ, Michael Jordan, that is. And, I, you know, it's impossible to know that because they didn't play together and they didn't play against each other. And it's not a one-on-one game. So even if they played in the same era, I don't know that you can just measure them straight up like that and, and really be accurate. However, the notion that LeBron James isn't even close to Jordan is absurd, right? He's had eight straight trips to the finals since 2010, eight years in a row. Well, I guess, excuse me, starting in 2011. But from 11 through 18, LeBron is in the finals every one of those years. That's insane. No one's ever seen that. It's generational greatness. I'm actually even a huge Kobe Bryant fan. I'm not a huge LeBron James fan. I like LeBron. I think to my the point I'm trying to make, he's, it's incredible to see what he's done. But it's not because I've just been a LeBron fanboy forever. It's because I don't know how you objectively cannot concede that this guy is really impressive. Um, you look at last year's Cleveland team, the, the 27-2018 Cleveland team, any other player, you trade any other player in the league, I don't care if it's Kevin Durant, Steph Curry, Giannis, the Greek freak, Kawhi Leonard, I don't care who it is, you put them on the the Cavaliers last year in place of LeBron, and I don't. I doubt that team makes the playoffs, right? They only, and not only do they make the playoffs, they got to the finals purely on LeBron's back. And yet again, it's the same sentiment that we get with Tom Brady and the boring Super Bowl is the same thing we get with LeBron and, and the boring NBA finals because people are tired of it being of LeBron going. That's crazy. That's just simply crazy. And I think it's I think it's probably driven a lot by social media and everyone having you know their platform to, sh- to share their view on it or whatever which is is good um but you know in the 90s i don't remember a lot of backlash all the time when michael jordan was winning over and over again uh instead it was just a constant celebration of his greatness and i think if we just had traditional media outlets we'd probably see more of that with lebron that would probably be more the narrative but in the world we live in today that's not what the narrative is the narrative is that it, it's boring and I, I just, that doesn't make any sense at all. I think everyone should objectively be able to look at LeBron and say, this is incredible what this guy is doing. And he doesn't have to be your favorite player and you don't have to root for him to win. But the sentiment that he's somehow harming the, the game of basketball or harming the experience as a fan is, is just is just wild. The truth is, is that I want to love sports a lot more than I actually do. I, I grew up playing sports. Um and I, 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 I watched them for a long time, but now I just, I don't really watch a ton of sports. Um, the media coverage, at least of sports now is just nonstop drama. You know, that's all that people want. You know, it's funny, a person who likes football, for, for example, let's say they just, you know, the, their primary show that they watch every week is, is football games, right? Sundays and maybe Monday nights is their, their happy place. They love football. Well, they think that someone who likes the real housewives of insert a city, Houston, Atlanta, wherever they're from. I don't know. I don't watch those shows either. <laughs> I have seen clips and it's horrible. But anyway, a person who likes football might think someone from the real housewives of insert city has totally different things that they like than, than they do, right? They, they, they're two people that have very different worldviews. The guy who likes football or gal, right, thinks that they like elite athletes striving for greatness and they want to watch high levels of competition and that's what they're about. And that's not what The Real Housewives is about. The Real Housewives is about, you know, stupid stuff, like who's mad at who and who deserves what. Well, newsflash for you here. That's just what football is all about, too. Almost all sports coverage is like that. You know, in The Real Housewives, maybe it's Lisa shouldn't get to celebrate her baby shower because she just had a birthday and an anniversary. It's all about Lisa. Well, that's identical to Tom Brady shouldn't won, shouldn't win now because he just won five other times. It's just drama and it's just ridiculous. So people can say, well, I don't pay attention to the media. I just watch, you know, I, I just watch the games for for the, the competition itself and to see the athletes performing. Well, that's fine. But if that's true, then we don't have this sentiment that it's boring to see Tom Brady win six Super Bowls. Or we don't have this sentiment that it's boring to watch LeBron James go to the NBA Finals eight straight times. Because if you were only interested in the pure athleticism and competition of it, that's all you would be interested in. And and these guys are great performers, but that's not what people are interested in. Instead, people are interested in whether Tom or LeBron should get to have their baby shower right after their birthday and anniversary. And it's just crazy. 
I don't know. The whole thing's kind of ridiculous. And, and one final thought that's really more just about football, and this doesn't really tie into uh, to the, the 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 concept I've been talking about about it being boring. Um, but it, it's just yet another example of where people just seem to be completely disconnected from reality when it comes to their idea of themselves as a sports fan. There there is or was a, a meme going around that shows a football helmet, and then next to that it shows an army helmet. And the text of the meme says that the guy who wears the army helmet should make as much money as the guy who wears the football helmet. Well, that's bullshit. And and whoever whoever is sharing that sentiment doesn't actually believe that. People who like football send, spend significant portions of their money on beer, chips, soda, snack foods, TV packages, bumper stickers, you know, all of that stuff, maybe even some ESPN Plus, just to make sure they have the best football experience they can have. They buy tickets, they buy jerseys, all of that stuff. And all of that is the reason that NFL players make so much. It's not just the, the price of the ticket at admission. All of those industries are tied into the NFL, and the NFL gets revenue from advertising for all of those industries at the very least, right? So that's the reason that the NFL market is what it is. It's, it's not because society thinks that they're morally superior or more deserving of making more money. It's that people almost beg to give their money to football-related things. You know who pays soldiers? Taxes do. Taxes pay soldiers. Yet nobody is advocating that we pay more taxes outside of maybe some people on the left campaigning that the rich need to pay more. But the rich is not the, the, the group that props up the NFL. It's the, it's the general public. It's the, the, the masses of people that aren't exceptionally wealthy. It's not the 1% that makes up football fandom, right? It's, it's everyone else. And until everyone else is ready to start paying more taxes then I don't think that that's actually something that, that you believe. Uh, I just, I, I can't, I can't handle the sanctimonious bullshit when, when someone doesn't actually believe it. it it's, it's just incredibly hypocritical to, to act like, <laughs> like you support the troops and not the football players because you can say it and show a picture of it. When in reality, everything you do is in support of football players, and none of it is in support of the government or, or, or military because, again, you don't want to pay taxes, right? No one does. Everyone wants to have a, a reduced tax burden. Either way, I just I wanted to, to talk about this because, the like I said, the, the I don't know, hypocrisy or... Um, I, I don't... I, maybe hypocrisy is, is, is too strong of a word. The cognitive dissonance that people have in order to maintain their position as sports fans... It's just really fascinating to me, and, and I just wanted to highlight some of those topics. Thanks so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed the show, and have a good one.